Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with uh, RackN, and we're going to do a open source community deployment of Kubernetes with Helm. So the purpose of this video is actually to extend the work we've been doing, show how you integrate Helm into it, uh, which is now part of the package, uh, using Crib, Kubernetes Rebar Integrated uh, Bootstrapping. Uh, so this is the Digital Rebar Project homepage at, page at rebar.digital. This is the Crib documentation. Uh, which is integrated into Digital Rebar as an automatic build from the GitHub content under Digital Rebar Provision Content, Crib, and then all the documentation, if you want to update, extend, add, make things better, is uh, actually baked right into the content library. So every parameter, everything actually automatically builds the documentation right there from the sources. Um, super proud of this feature. We've been doing this on a whole bunch of things. But it's not while you're listening to the video. You want to see us build Kubernetes automatically integrate Helm, and then I'll show you how to use Helm from your desktop. Uh, and this is a really significant add into the, the Kubernetes work we're already doing. I'm going to go ahead and kick it off um, in the background. I have an OpenStack cluster building, also a OneNode OpenStack. It takes about 25 or so minutes, so we'll be done well before that. It only takes about two minutes to install <laughs> Kubernetes uh, here. So let me go ahead and do the... Um, Crib fast cluster and build up the cluster. These things are already in the um, profile, and I needed to start something. I can edit it while it's while we're getting things running. Um, I wanted to add a Helm chart in this case, so I just have to add the Helm ver parameter into the system, and I want to add the stable MySQL, like in all the intro demos uh, chart. Whoops, and I have to actually do it correctly. Stable MySQL. So that, when I add it, oops, and then save, see if that worked. Here's the, my Kubernetes profile. Ah, wow, it's already building most of the Kubernetes cluster as we go. Um, let's see. Oh, and it took my chart. Here's my chart. Um, we because it's, we use patch, uh, you can make incremental changes to something even if other people are editing, as long as they're incremental. Um, anyway, so I added this Helm chart uh, into the into the workflow for the system. Um, this is my master; it's been elected already. Um, if I look at the workflow for this, what you'll see is uh, we've added Crib Helm. Uh, it's part of the default workflows. Uh, if you want to build custom workflow, which you can do by cloning the ones we have and then adding, you can add or remove Helm. Helm is idempotent as a stage. And so it will, you can run it multiple times. You can add different things. You can add a profile that sets different uh, charts to install. So you could literally have five Helm stages with different ch profiles that install different charts. Very straightforward to do that in normal digital rebar activity. Um, systems progressing through. What it's doing, if I have a little chart for that, is it's installing. We started with this uh, OS booted and Docker installed. Uh, and then the Kubernetes workflow elects a leader and then runs kubeadm init on the leader. Also builds an etcd cluster and a TLS infrastructure too. Um, and then once the, to the token's created, it allows all the other nodes to join. Um, and then there's a new stage that then runs, installs Helm. It creates a role for Helm, a service role, and then installs Helm. Um, and then it'll look in that parameter and run any charts and install them automatically. Uh, and the list of charts is pretty extensive. This is the Helm charts tree stable. So there's a ton of things, and we'll, we'll play with that in a minute. But I just picked MySQL out of it as a reference. Uh, you'll notice the nodes we have, the machines we have are already up. And the machine, the color keeps changing on the, the host, the master, um, as we're running things. So right now it's installing the dashboard. Uh, in a second, it'll actually do the Helm install, and we'll be able to, to check in on, on that. Um, the system does actually watch and monitor, monitor what's going on. So it will know if you've uh, already installed Helm and skipped those tasks and things like that. It only actually runs on the master, but uh, it'll skip all the other ones. And so you're, you can see... If you look at the live logs, um, it in initialized, installed Tiller. It waits until Tiller's up so that we don't have synchronization issues. And once Tiller's up, it then applies whatever charts you've asked to apply as your default base. Um, so if you wanted to chain together an installation, um, all those things, you could just literally dump in additional charts and 
they would be installed in your Kubernetes cluster automatically inside of this two minute process. Um, so in this case, it finished uh, doing that install. Whoops, showing a little bit of debugging information. And so now it's run. You can actually see it's running uh, in Helm install. And here is my MySQL cluster up and the everything's done. So we just, in the time of this video, uh, did a complete Kubernetes install on bare metal. Uh, no touch at all. all I, and, I, and I even installed the MySQL uh, components in it. Um, that's it. Done. All right. Let me decompose things a little bit and show you how to, how to play. Uh, if I go into the crib cluster, you'll see we have a whole bunch of um, variables and information, including my admin comp file, which I want to get. Um, and what I could normally do is I can click here, download it. It'll, it'll, I can download that the admin comp file just by right clicking and, and clicking save. Uh, I want to do something a little bit different than that. Um, what, I want, what I'm going to do is uh, I already have my cluster set uh, for this machine uh, in my background. So my DRP, this is DRP CLI, and I'm going to tell it to go profiles, get the crib profile, which is the one I was showing you on the screen behind us. And I want the parameter that is the admin conf file, and I'm just going to stick it in admin conf. And that literally downloaded it and created my admin credentials so I would be able to work locally. And then uh, what, I, what I want to be able to do is um, just say kubectl admin conf. And so now if I uh, kubectl uh, get nodes, these are the nodes that are in my cluster. Very nice, all the ones I just brought up. Uh, and if I want to say get services, I'll be actually be able to see the MySQL service that got installed in the cluster. So rock on, I'm doing, doing pretty well. I've already installed Helm on this machine. Let's give, and then so what I can do is I can actually say I want to see my Helm. First I have to init it. And I only want to do the client because it's already installed on the server. So I did a Helm init client only. Uh, that looks pretty good. Um, right, I don't need the full init because Helm's already running. And then I, I can just say Helm version, and it's going to pick up the version of Helm. Now, you can control the version of Helm that you use by adding a parameter into that cluster, uh, and it will respect that during the install time. Um, obviously, they, there are Helm version compatibility, so you do have to make sure that you're using the right version of Helm for the service, the tiller service that you've installed in the back end. So all that's pretty cool. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go pick a stable chart. Uh, we have been a fan this week of uh, the file. What is it? Filebeat. Yay, there's Filebeat. Um, we just created a Filebeat plugin that uh, forwards events from Digital Rebar into Filebeat and then from there into wherever. Uh, let's see, which is pretty handy from a logging perspective. And so what I want to do now is I'm going to do a Helm install install, uh, let's see, stable, file beat. And since I've got my uh, Kubernetes credentials, Helm's going to work. I've got my install. All that looks great. And then let's uh, do exactly what it tells us to do. That's pretty cool. And you can see that we actually now have file beat running. Uh, looks like three containers. And if we jump back a little bit, uh, we can just get the services, and you'll see uh, it's not all the way there yet. Um, so it'll it's creating the containers, and it's going to come up, and then we'll get to see things happen as they go. Ah, looks like they're running. I might have permissions set up to make it harder. Let's see, what was I playing with? I played earlier today. Instead of uh, this, I was doing Drupal. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't played with the file beat Helm chart enough to know. Uh, I do know Drupal uh, brought up MariaDB and Drupal pretty darn quickly. Obviously, they're not running yet uh, since they're not configured like that. But uh, once again, this is super easy, right? I'm spending a lot more time just showing you how to use the kubectl and Helm charts uh, from the command line than the actual install process, right? In this case, we literally just brought up Kubernetes. We added whatever charts we wanted. 
and then um, I said go. Uh, and then if I want to do a reset, by the way, so this is great. Rob, hey, you're full of it. I, I don't believe you. Hey, look, OpenStack finished. Um, once again, to reset the cluster, you just reset the cluster. Uh, because these are in-memory machines, we're going to have to bounce the machines, uh, which takes a little bit of time. So I'm going to tell it to go back to this to Discover with Docker stage. It's going to try and actually do it. But I'm going to reboot the machines to reset. So this will take about, uh, Docker takes a while to install, so it'll take about three minutes to reset. I know, three minutes. Um, and then once that's done, then I will be able to go straight back into Kubernetes fast and, and do it. And of course, if I wanted to, I could take these workflows um, and I could merge my workflow uh, thing. So right now I have Discover with Docker, and that one's going to uh, basically attach the drives and install Docker and then go. If I combine that with my... Um, Crib fast cluster I, that basically just pick up Kubernetes install, etcd. Oh, let's do it over here. Uh, etcd config, crib config, crib helm, and then just an end wait. Uh, so I could put those two things together and then reset my clusters just by rebooting them. Uh, it's always fun to find optimizations. It's pretty easy. Um, and we have a video, if you want to play with this and do this whole thing with Terraform, you can do that too. I, we have a video about how to use uh, the Terraform integration that we have, uh, which is happily uh, lurking under Integrations Crib. And you can play with building a whole packet in cluster uh, and going all the way through uh, how things go. So that is that. Uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. And... Uh, Tell us the great things that you're doing with Crib and Helm Charts as an add-on to it. Thanks a lot. This is Rob Hirschfeld, signing out.